months or years. But where we are trying to construct um, different homological invariants associated to knots. Um, me, I gave multiple talks around here. Uh, I think the most recent one was maybe earlier this month at MSI RI. Um, there's going to be, I think, significant overlap in my talk and whatever she was telling you. Um, but also, I've decided to take slightly different perspective and really uh, illustrate everything on a uh, non-trivial but rather simple example. Um, and I'm just going to introduce different. Uh, so we, we're going to have this goal in, in mind of computing uh, uh, like Kovanov homology of Hopflink. And I'm just going to introduce all the necessary ingredients along the way. Uh, and we'll see how, how far we'll get. Shall we start with the introduction? Sorry. Is that all you? Uh, so we'll be interested in construction of various topological invariants, topological links in R3, uh, such as the whole thing that you did in the figure. And we're going to use this uh, example, this example for the operational purposes and we're just going to work out uh, everything with a simple example. There is this large two of polynomial invariants, such as the Jones polynomial. Um, that is a polynomial associated to a node um, that is topologically variant of the node and goes.
from the vertical. There is nothing. Okay. <laughs> I think we'll still hear it yeah. as well. And then, so the problem is mainly with, I think, with the question, right? So, for that, for that, I'm not going to start. So, people will still concern you when they're. Yeah. Your voice will still concern you. Okay. So, now that it was kind of a general introduction, I'm going to tell you what was the plan for what's our plan for today. So, I'm going to review some aspects of uh, Mina's proposal, uh, and I'm going to turn uh, her proposal into a calculational tool which is based on our work in progress that is hopefully going to appear very soon and i'm also going to uh, sketch the proof of topological invariance uh, of such invariance and uh, towards the end i'm also going to mention a little bit about uh, uh, like comment a little bit on uh, the generalization to other glm slash n homological invariants no, so I think these are going to be like maybe two papers or something. So I think like these three are the same. And uh, the general GLM slash N, I think is going to appear sometime in the future. Uh, yeah. No, we also the general ordinary That's right. Sorry, ordinary That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Mia proposes four different fixtures actually that lead, lead to link invariants. I'm not going to uh, review them and this whole, uh, right? They're mutually related by mirror symmetry in combination with some actor and localization. Uh, Mina gave multiple talks on, on, on that. So I'm not going to uh, dive any deeper. And today we'll be interested in one of the, uh, one of the constructions based on uh, some calculations in Landau with Bru model living on a strip with the target being n symmetric power of punctured dream on surface. Uh, where the Kovano homology or the homologic invariant is going to be associated, identified with the space of supersymmetry ground states of this model with a particular choice of the boundary conditions on each side of I. And as I, as I promised above, uh, I'm going to illustrate the whole construction and the example of the hop link. Okay, so let me start with the calculation. Now for the next half an hour or 45 minutes, we are going to compute uh, the homological invariant of the hop of the hop link. So the first step is to stretch the knot and divide it into three pieces. Simple caps, a middle uh, that is that consists of uh, constant uh, strand bits and braided cups at the bottom. And now I'm going to tell you what is the target of the of the um, of the Landau group model. So the target is determined by the middle slice of this in this picture, and this middle slice has, has a geometry of c times i, with not bits inserted along i and placed at fixed positions z1 to z2n. There's always an even number of uh, of strands, so that's why it goes from one to to n. And let me denote for the purpose of this talk the resulting punctured plane by sigma and the desired uh, desi desired target is then a symmetric power and symmetric power uh, of this punctured uh, punctured plane and in our example of the hop link n is two so we have four strands so it's going to be a second symmetric power of four punctured plane so what do you mean by the middle slice and the jump shell which call that I mean, so I'm stretching in one direction and I'm cutting it, I'm slicing, slicing the picture uh, by. C is the slice. That's right. So and C is the horizontal slice, and this I is like this I. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. That's right. Basically, that's right. That's correct. Okay, so since uh, we are dealing with Landau-Ginsburg model, uh, I need to tell you what the potential is. 
and potential needs to be this function on this symmetric and symmetric power of sigma and there's a natural source of such functions uh, associated with the algebra that are conformal blocks and just to give you an example a conformal block for the Verazoro algebra on a plane with insertion of two n vertex operators in the fundamental representation at position zi can be written in the following contour integral formula <clears throat> this is a standard uh, clone gas prescription for computing conformal blocks uh right it's epsilon it's minus epsilon minus epsilon and epsilon it's just a parameter <clears throat> okay and these are potential encoding the equivalent grading together with the holomorphic form uh, omega encoding the mass flow grading uh, can be read off from the integrand of the above expression uh, by equating the following uh, the following combination with the right hand side and we have the z1 to z2n uh, that are the position of our node strands so it was like these four uh four removed uh points and like in the example above and we have the x1 going to xn which are the coordinates on the symmetric power and we have also dropped the xi independent terms because they are just going to contribute by the constant shift of the potential so we don't really care about it uh, it's not going to influence our gradings it's not going to influence anything so concrete in, in this example we can identify the omega we can identify uh, the potential in the following in the following way so the identification would be slightly uh, more complicated if we uh, look at control blocks of more complicated uh, more complicated algebras uh, that would lead to other uh, other invariants anyway we also had the choice of the contour and this uh, choice of the contour c is going to be related to the choice of boundary conditions uh, for our model as we are going to see next okay no what happens at the uh, that's right so uh yeah so right so i think you should be uh moving to some uh cover of the And what you care is the double itself, so when you come to the full value of the function, so any subdirection is zero, and that's all we need. For anything that actually computes, and if it doesn't, if you actually find that the double doesn't fall, that thing is zero. It's not a lot of computing there, so that's cool. So that's that's anything like it doesn't. So you just can take the last one with the parallel. So part of the definition of the part of it is not really, you're not allowing all mass that will be able to allow all the mass part, as you say, there will be mass in the past of that animal, but on the first mass, the double isn't going to be ready, right? So the actual is ready. Double being the regular part of the condition that, 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 that also actually will be part of it. Okay, so then uh, I told you that the top and the bottom of the stretch picture uh, is going to give you the two Lagrangians to the two boundary conditions on each of the side of the uh, of the internal or internal. Um, right, because from the perspective of this middle part, the other two slices specify a boundary condition on the two sides of the interval I. And I'm just going to tell you what is the proposal for these uh, the, these Lagrangians at the top and at the bottom. So at the top we had these caps, simple caps, and we associate a Lagrangian that is simply symmetric product of lines stretched between the two punctures that are joined by the arch, or joined by the by the cup. So in particular, in the previous picture we had like the top top part, the top slice look like this, and we associate uh, the product of these two of these two lines. I call them by different colors just to like once we'll be braiding things, it's just going to be make things much more uh, like easy to visualize and, and see what is going on. So now let me turn uh, to the bottom. 
Uh, so if the north strands on the other side were simple cups, the Lagrangians would have been symmetric products of figure eight, as shown in this picture. But since we are having more complicated things, we need to braid these figure eights. So what I do here, I just like divide it into three slices. And I start, I told you that uh, one associates these simple uh, products of figure eight, figure eight to the bottom cups. And now you braid, right? So in the, in the first step, you exchange these two strands by the left strand going in front, right? So here I take these two guys and I braid them like this. And I do one more do it one more time here. And I end up with this kind of picture. And the product of these braided figure eight is going to be the Lagrangian uh, boundary condition that I associate to the other side of the of the internal. How come they these need to be the so I mean uh, Oh, okay. okay. So it it's so it's a two point up to ordering, right? So here we have two points. So we have like this point and this point, but they are identified they're the same. They're indistinguishable. And these points, these points, these points, these points. So there's it just go is it's going to be pairs of these guys. That's right. Yeah. So if you were not on symmetric pattern, you had product you had this one. And if you are, you have like two things and the points are really pairs, uh, pairs of points up to ordering. <clears throat> okay. And now the desired homological invariant uh, arise from counting intersection points between these, this cat for Lagrangian that I denote as L1 and the braided cup uh, Lagrangian L2 in our land of Gisburg model. And the analog of the Kovanov's homological degree is the standard Maslow degree encoded by this omega. And the analog of the epsilon degree is the equivalent degree encoded by uh, W. <clears throat> and right, uh, these two come from the lift of the phase uh, of this quantity that we saw before into a single valid function on our Lagrangians. And now the, the question is, uh, where we can find an algorithm to find these intersection points in possibly complicated uh, configurations associated to like really complicated braidings and possibly uh, like high symmetric powers and, and so on. And we are going to find a solution to this problem, but making the pro pro problem algebraic. Okay, so you don't need the steps, right? Yes. What do you mean? how yeah right so i mean no, no, that's... In the second one, they're really easy that that that, that we don't need to do anything <laughs> that that's the easy and the, the hard part is understanding the hard part. right hard yeah so i kind of like sure uh yeah i made this explicit uh, implicit um i could have said or maybe might have said should have said uh like intersection points modulo like differential. The previous slide. Yeah. <coughs> How many intersection points? So right now, like uh, not counting the disks. So what we would have to do, we would have to intersect with uh, these cup grains, and we they would uh, stretch. We would have like a line stretched here between these two, and line stretch between these two. There's going to be a bunch of intersection points, but you always need to make sure that you are picking. So these are going to be pairs of points, right? But you need to always need to uh, make sure that you are uh, like exactly one point is on each of the cycles, right? So there will be, for example, this. Sorry? There's going to be eight. Yeah, probably. I mean, we are going to see it like. The goal of this uh, of this talk is to really work it out uh, in detail, so we're going to see it uh, rather explicitly, hopefully. No, there are eight, there are eight points in the second eight pictures, but the uh, actually like four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight of them. 
I mean, so I just did the counting. So you can pick this one and then you can pick this one plus this or, or this one. So this is two, or you can take the blue guy here and this one or this one. So this is four, or you can take the blue guy here and the red here, this and this one, which is another two, or this guy and this one and this one. So it's eight. <clears throat> right, but they are going to be connected by some non-trivial differentials. But in a lot of complexes, they're more. In what? Yeah, like, uh... yeah a lot of complexes are bigger. That's right, yeah. They're almost always bigger. That's right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so now, let's, right. So go back. Uh, now we are going to look at the simplest case where we have a single strand. Uh, where we don't have, we're not taking symmetric powers. We take just simply uh, the punctured, uh, the punctured plane. Okay. So at first sight, it seems uh, that the config, the only configuration that you can draw containing a single uh, pair of punctures is the following picture, corresponding to the unknot, right? Because I've associated the cup uh, to the figure eight, and uh, like this, this line to the to this. Uh, cap, and this picture just corresponds to the unknown, and it seems that uh, this is the only configuration that we can engineer that is pot potentially interesting from the knot theory point of view. Uh, but luckily, it turns out that cutting one one strand, such as in this picture, so what I did here, we had, we had this this picture like previously, and now I single out one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the punctures. And I remove the corresponding uh, cup and cap cycle uh, from the figure uh, and get the following picture. And the proposal is that this leads to actually reduced homology invariant. So this is the thing uh, that comes like before rescaling. Remember, there were these two invariants. Oh, yeah, I have I mean, the expression here, right? I have this GL2 invariant, I have the Jones polynomial. And I told you that they are the same up to some, uh, some extra p factor. Uh, so the proposal is proposal that after cutting strand, you recover these uh, reduced invariants. So in particular, uh, using this proposal, finding reduced homology for any rational knot, where the rational knots uh, are those that come from capping braids of four strands, becomes almost trivial, as we are going to see now. You don't, you don't need to count any, any disks. Like, uh, you can almost just read off uh, the homology from the yeah in particular you know there were these theorems by in Rasmus has been proving about uh uh for 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 general for general so it's like for example so obvious that 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 the homology tends to follow all the right yeah that makes sense makes sense so so there's this the reduced Oh, no, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think so. Like you are just like you are opening up one of the strands. Yeah, like in the standard slice pictures, like the, the morphism space is one dimensional, and then so the thing in the middle is just gives you a rescaling, which is which happens to be the reason. It's just normalization of the Jones form, setting the Jones form into one. Pretty unknown. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that makes sense in the in the categorization here as, yes. as well. Yes. So, so rather than you know, on these like maps, they can almost keep it on the strands. No, uh, you remove uh you remove a component of so generally the Exactly what 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 you what, what you described in uh in uh yeah you you uh remove uh, instead of working in national part of two points you increase more down to a single point on the interface and remove a corresponding that, that just turns out to be the description which is actually well known from the behavior of all the yeah and just I'm wondering if there's a reason. Some intuitive reason why you have one chaos, so like you have lots of chaos, so you can remove one chaos, and then like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, but you have to be careful because if you do some more than other systems, they don't determine each other. Right. 
the good for population. Yes. What you're saying is that the reduced one is easier. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, right. So in this simple example, we can immediately see that we have two intersection points. And we can also kind of see that there's no disk intersecting the puncture that could possibly lead to a non trivial differential between them. And we could identify the degree of the, of the puncture disk in the picture and identify the relative mass of an equivalent degree to recover the Jones polynomial. I'm not going to do that. We are instead going to uh, follow more algebraic and slightly different perspective. Um, right. And because counting disks in more complicated setups involving uh, more complicated braiding and multiple strands becomes rather involved problem. And that's why we are now going to develop an algebraic approach. And to develop this algebraic uh, approach, we are going to uh, utilize a special kind of Lagrangian brains uh, known as symbols. Uh, so <clears throat> these are going to generate our our category and we are going to express or rewrite or describe our Lagrangian in terms of some non-trivial complexes of these symbols. And what are the symbols in our example? They are just straight lines between punctures as I, uh, as I show in the picture. So in particular in these four punctured uh, plane, we have four symbols, uh, five symbols uh, of the following form. Okay, I need to also tell you what are the morphisms between symbols and what morphisms we are, right, uh, they are in correspondence with inter their intersection points. And naively it looks that they don't really intersect, uh, but according to standard uh, construction, you actually need to deform uh, one, of the, one of the brains, uh, which corresponds to tilting, one of the, well, one of the brains in the, uh, in, in the picture that I, uh, like in, in our current, uh, current setup, and we find one morphism for each pair of Ti uh, going to Tj. Right? So, for example, the T1 going to T3 would correspond to the uh, following picture where we start with the T1, we tilt the T3, and we find an intersection point at the bottom, like under the, uh, under the, uh, the row of, of our punctures. And similarly, T3 going to T2. So we start with T3, this is T2, we tilt T2, but now we can see that the intersection is on the other side of the, uh, of the, of the line of punctures. And we're going to use a pictorial representation for these morphisms in terms of strand algebra elements, where we uh, like write four strands associated to the four punctures, and then we uh, denote the, the morphism by a line going from the first slot to the third slot, or third slot to the second slot in this picture. And we are going to use this strand algebra notation for the morphisms. The composition of the strands that was it again? So on the right, you have two crosses in the strand picture. In the strand picture, that's right. But it only tells you that it is uh, it is separated by two, I'm not talking about any compositions. Right? This is really just kind of labeling so far. And the reason why it crosses two of the, uh, two of the lines is that these two symbols are separated by two dots. But it's not like that you have morphism from two one to two, you have another morphism from two two. Sure, yeah, you do. Yes, and that's what we are going to do next, actually. That's right. You can do it that way. And I mean, not next, now there's like, one more slide in between, but we are going to do it soon. So <clears throat> brains in one language group model uh, generally carry more structures and they can support a non-trivial flat vector bundle. And to get the desired invariant, uh, you actually need to introduce such modification results resulting into an algebra of strands decorated by some extra dots. So our strand algebra is going to be generated by uh, these guys, and these strands decorated by dots. And this algebra is known as the KLRW algebra, uh, right? <clears throat> okay, uh, so now kind of answering your uh, your questions, hopefully, your question, hopefully. Now we can ask about composition of the morphisms. And as you suggested, you can say, start with 
T2 going to T3, which would correspond to this kind of picture uh, or this kind of picture in terms of the strand algebra generators and compose it with T3 going to T4, which is this top, top guy here, right? And <clears throat> the non-trivial composition is always, uh, always corresponds to non-trivial mass of degree zero disk in the picture. And indeed, we do see this uh, uh, mass of degree zero disk in the picture appearing. And we can read off the result of the composition by identifying the third uh, intersection, the third intersection point on, the, on, the, on this disk. And we can identify it with the uh, morphism going from T4, sorry, going from T, T1 to T4. T, sorry, T2 to T, T4, right? Which is exactly this strand, strand algebra element. So, right. So the resulting algebra really just uh, comes from the composition of the strands together with uh, one more relation uh, telling you that uh, if you're composing strands going in opposite directions, you actually don't get zero, but you get uh, you get a dot, you get an identity with the dot inserted. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they have fancy name for that. I don't think I'm the right person to uh, answer this question. So either Mina or Ivan or uh, what is a dot? Uh, so uh, you really mustn't forget about morphism here, and the fact that there's that uh, it's not that that why actually nerve comes with a small piece of a bigger structure of the upper thing, okay? And uh, so there are two ways of answering it. Either purely, um, yeah, so, the, so if you want that, the place where you can sort of uh, most easily abstractly show that you're getting non invariant is in the category of V-ray on the, on the, on, on the, on the hexavariant mirror of the side. Okay. And then you ask, how do I go down to, to, to the face of half dimension where you can actually recalculate? And the process of going down, Actually tells you that the symbols that you use are not the naive symbols, which that they 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 come equipped with uh, with a vector model on top, and this just comes from starting with some upstairs Lagrangian and going down, and this is the story that we developed with Hanger. So, what what's the topology of this symbol? So, so, so basically, what what happens is that if you want to work on the full space, it's it's actually really boring. Over the fiber over every point of the downstairs space is uh, just a copy of a mirror to T. Okay. Uh, what for each dimension of your downstairs space Y? Okay. And basically, the, the, the dots are, are just uh, the strings that, that um, so, now, however, the, the, the issue is that to go from upstairs to downstairs, uh, you, um, you you want to do it in such a way that it actually pre preserves you preserve firstly you know why is such an asymmetric structure of like the cast on the top because if you were to work upstairs this would have been explained the reason you need a you need a funny figure eight brain is that it's something that in the in the, up, the upstairs theory is more symmetric but you really can't calculate an extra dimension. Going down upstairs to downstairs, it tells you that downstairs, once you come to the downstairs space specifically, and it's speaking to you, that the downstairs, uh, the, the downstairs key brain gets uh, equipped with, with a finite, uh, uh, with, with a vector one. Okay, so that's basically for every intersection point of the downstairs key brain, you actually have to put in. It's not just the intersection point itself, there's little vector space sitting on top. Okay. And that vector space is the other intersections that sit that the potential is set in the fiber of that point. So th that kind of thing where uh is not as like consistent as the car category of these vectors. There's an upstairs category of fiber over it, and actually only a small piece of it survives. But the reason you can't completely fill it is actually physically very interesting. It's related to the fact that um, that um, column branches are like 
the metric space. So what you'd like to do to, on, on, on the B side is basically set the argument car loss plus to zero. Okay, but you can't. The only thing you can do is set the symmetric part to zero. That's the remnant of that. You can't simply impose. So, so it turns out you, you, you cannot simply ask the the whole argument car loss. Great. So you say you have symmetric on that. Okay, 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 Explicitly. So, yeah. there was one question. Good ask. Mm -hmm. This one? Yeah, yeah. So, in that, how do you check that the intersection point is going to be three? Like from P1 to P3. Like if it goes in this direction or in this yeah. direction, it depends which one are you fold, folding first. And I think it, it's kind of, it doesn't matter too much. Right, so you're tilting one of them. So here, like I pick the convention where I'm tilting the second one. So I start with this one, I'm tilted T1, and I tilted the, the second one. And I do the same, same thing here. And it, it just turns out that the intersection is on this side. And here I do, I'm, I start with T3, and I'm tilting again the second one. It just turns out that the intersection is on the other side. And the time that you always uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And it, um, it is it is possible that uh, you're saying that here I'm doing it incorrectly. Yeah, maybe. No, no, no. I'm tilting. That's right. That's right. I I continue turning right in the same way. So I just like start with the first one. I'll be, like the the direction in which you are tilting when composing uh, should be consistent. Right, right, of course. I see. So. Is it small crack in the writing that's with the E share and the reflection? Uh huh. That it's also. The paper we are writing is with the E share and the reflection data. So. Okay. Oh, he's there as well. I see. So I should include more people in <laughs> citations. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And two slides ago, there was a point that was in one of the one of the puncture slides, or maybe it was the slide, the, the one. One more? Yeah, in that one, in the in the second, in the one with one dot, the dot is sitting over the puncture. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's just somewhere. You can freely move the, the dot along these punctures. Okay, sure. Yeah. Along these these lines. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so. Now uh, you can actually associate an accurate uh, degree to these uh, different string generators um, <clears throat> by identifying uh, various disks and their degrees, and um, it just turns out that uh, this is a consistent assignment of the uh, of the degrees of our strand, al strand algebra generators. Okay. And what we are going to do now, we are actually going to resolve the brain in terms of these stable generators. So how are we going to do that? Uh, so we have now found the algebra of the strand algebra, which is the algebra of morphisms between uh, these sums of the stable generators. And they admit a nice description in terms of the above uh, strand algebra. And what we are going to do now, we are going to use this T uh, to describe Lagrangian uh, L in terms of a complex of these symbols. So how do people usually do it? Uh, um, you start with the, sorry, you can construct a module, right. So you first construct a module for the strand algebra by intersecting the Lagrangian L with the T, uh, right? So you identify this kind of guy and this guy naturally admits an action of the uh, strand algebra because you can compose the, the morphisms. And secondly, you find a projective resolution of such a module, and this gives you a, the desired uh, complex of symbols. <clears throat> uh, but this is a very non-trivial construction, and what we are actually going to do uh, 
in the next couple of minutes, uh, I'm going to offer you an alternative proposal for finding such a resolution. And uh, right, so we would like to present the brain of interest as a complex of symbols with differential given by collection of strand algebra elements. And it turns out that in this simple element, simple example of a single strand, because we've been dealing with single strand so far, we can read off the complex almost completely directly from the geometry. And this is rather surprising since finding the projective resolutions explicitly is usually a rather challenging task. So in doing so, we are first going to uh, stretch our cycle into vertical bits resembling the thimbles, which are these guys, and the horizontal bits corresponding to the maps between them. Right? And using this stretch representation of our cycle, we can read off directly what the, uh, how the resolution should look like. So how is it going to look like? We start with T1. And remember that down here, the, intersect the, the morphisms were associated with the, uh, with the generator going from T1 to 1, 2, 3, 4, T4. And indeed, here I, I write T1 going to T4. I continue, right? So I go from here to here. Now I go to T3. And here the morphisms go all in, all in the, this direction, right? So I continue in the same direction. T4 going to T, uh, T4 going to T, T3. So we are blah, 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 we are here. Now we need to go from T4 to T2, but this morphism goes in the opposite direction because it's below the, uh, the line of the, of the crosses. So we need to actually go from T, uh, what's that? T2 to T, T3. And this is also what I do here, T2 going to T3. I can continue. Right? And if you wish, you can also collapse the above, uh, the, the above complex into a standard complex uh, of the following form. Um, it doesn't. So this is just an approximation. And now we're going to correct it. So this guy actually closes, but only up to dotted corrections. And right, it closes downstairs because if you have a single strand, when you're removing the symmetric, uh, I mean, the downstairs algebra, in downstairs algebra, you are just removing all the dots. And since the complex closes uh, only up to dots, it does close downstairs. But like today we'll be working upstairs. Uh, mostly, and you can find the lift of the, of the cycle up, upstairs by just turning on all possible maps with some kind of coefficients and try to solve for del delta squared equal zero. This turns out uh, that there's a single solution corresponding to turning on these two extra maps. Uh, but more importantly, we can actually assign epsilon degrees to all the thimbles uh, by knowing the degree of the strand algebra generators. So how do we do that? We start with degree zero here. Uh, we go to the next guy. Uh, but if you remember the assignment of the degrees from the previous slides, the strand algebra elements going to the right uh, had all degree zero. So the degree here is zero as well. Degree here is one because we are going one step to the left. Here we are going uh, to the right. So the degree of these guys is going to be the same uh, and so on. And you can just assign very easily the degree of all the uh, all, all, all the T's. So this is the equivalent deg degree. Okay. And what's the corrections? You... <clears throat> so the corrections are these two maps. And I remember you just talked about the corrections are which part has the identity map. Here are the dots. Right, so these are going to be connections, uh, corrections. So this is a correction that corresponds to the lift upstairs. There's going to be another correction uh, that that, uh, that comes from by counting disks. Uh, that is accounting for disks. But here we have trivial disks. There's nothing interesting, uh, and we're going to see these like H bar uh, contributions. But later on, once we move to two strands, so here things are simple, They're like simpler. <laughs> Uh, so we are later on going to uh, talk about different kinds of corrections. Um, you know what I'll do? Yeah. Uh, and uh, you're, you're just asking for the differential disclosure algebra, right? So the picture of the brain that you start with, 
But from that picture, you can read off some maps in the complex, but not all. Uh, in particular, for example, these dots are not presented at all, at all in, in, the, in, the, in the picture of the downshift frame. They're just not there. Uh, so you say, okay, if I want my differential to square, it's also zero and there on the dot. I need to press it. Well, you assume that the curves are unique. Uh, yes. <clears throat> but yeah. then you should be able to do that from the right? Like, I mean, I think mm -hmm. the perspective, like, because of the, you're not a symmetric power, then I think you should be able to do that. You can come up with them, but it's Maybe. It's easier. It's easier. They're, they're actually fixed by, by this uh, degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most likely you can. I, I could imagine, I could imagine finding being able to find like really an algorithm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, but sure. I mean, yes. Yeah. What's important is that uh, the information has to exist because uh, the, the, the update object is really the update of the vector. So it's, it's a problem that has no And you need. Yeah. But like, I mean, this other break rule that the dot one is very easy to zero it doesn't necessarily say that it's easy. It, it's true, it does not. However, the object that is trying to say, what's this guy? What's this guy? It's, it's mirror to a Radius one, right? I'm told that. Uh, and then uh, P one, that's uh, you know, that the cycle is with uh, with uh, with an all minus two one over that thing is not a thing. So, um, and um, the, the delta trick there, there's there's yeah, okay. So now we are in a position where we can find a reduced homology. Um, and so for that, we need to intersect with the, with the cup brain, okay, cap, cap, cup, cup, cup brain, cap, cap, cap brain. Uh, and one can see that these uh, cap brains uh, that I denote as I, IJ uh, stretch between, or II, that is stretched between I minus one's uh, puncture and the I puncture has a one-dimensional intersection, but only with a single thimble uh, TI. And you can see it immediately from this picture. So effectively, intersecting with I2 uh, only picks the T2 factors in our complex. And so we have this complex. We pick T2 factors. There's two of them. And we can read off the degrees. And here we go. And we can compute our characteristics and recover the Jones polynomial. Okay, so that was the calculations with single strand and recovering the uh, the Jones polynomial. And we are now going to move to multiple strands, uh, and I'm going to tell you what to do then. But working on symmetric paradoxes uh, products is much more challenging uh, since now intersection points become n tuples of points and on the punctured surface, and one has also non-trivial disks uh, such as this one uh, shown in the figure. <clears throat> and these are generally hard to count. So how we are going to solve the problem is by taking naive symmetric product of the individual complexes uh, for the individual cycles that we found before. And then we are going to write down some kind of ansatz for correction terms in the differential. And we are going to solve for this equation delta squared equals zero. Okay, so well, what are the symbols? Symbols are now products of uh, symmetric products of the sim of the previous symbols. Uh, so for example, for n equals two, we have this kind of symbol, and we are going to label it by t two two four or t four t four two and four tells you uh, where are the symbols located. Uh, morphisms are now going to be represented by n strands uh, because know that we have multiple intersection points now between each pair of symbols, and correspondingly we have also stress trends that do cross or don't cross. So here we have example, right? So example, we, for example, start with T2, uh, T2 free and find an intersection point with T2 free. 
but now we have two options. You can either have uh, the intersection uh, corresponding to the these two uh, points or these two points. And they are in correspondence with the strands that either do cross uh, or don't cross. Okay, and I don't want to go through the single st st strand case. We're going to analyze muscle degree zero disks. So there are relations uh, in the strand algebra. The disks now look more complicated, such as the one shown here. Um, and the relations again are uh, come from the composition of the strands up to some extra relations of the following form. <clears throat> and this defines the full K KLRW algebra. Mm -hmm. So it's right. I mean, they can go. So the, the point is that you can always like engineer everything in terms of these simple transitions where you go one one side to the, like, to the left or right or you're staying in the right and these are just relations that you impose locally you can ignore the black band. sorry so before you had like the red which goes into black and then goes back so the middle piece you're going to have like two red in the middle uh-huh you mean this one yeah how, how do you have two red well, you can have two reds in the same place, right? So, uh, sorry. I just. So we just this kind of picture. And you have this intersection or this intersection. And you can compose this one with the same one one more time. Uh, and you get zero, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, and blue line. So you're asking like how to identify which one is or yes and why are there, are there two two options for the cross i'm not sure it's asking about the sign oh how you like this side oh, like the, the difference between these two yeah yeah i mean yeah, yeah. Uh, the place where you can really compute the product easily is with the diagonal in the traffic product region. And then the constant is just trivial. And if yes. you compute the product where the diagonal in the traffic product region, actually the right hand side is all of these zero. So your question actually does not arise. Mm -hmm. The only so the question does arise is so then the question is okay now the theory I really want is the one where the diagonal is not fully deleted there so I'm asking that I'm to that how does my algebra respond okay. so then uh, it, uh, to answer this question is the one place where you actually have to count a non-trivial density of symmetric product to just uh, compute the algebra product and uh, with uh, with yeah, so there. Uh, yeah, so uh, so uh, you you can actually you you uh, so it turns out that uh, the, the just associativity of the algebra uh, correlates the the correction from the right. Okay, and there are some choices of derivation and support that will uh, say uh, put one one of these terms to say to have a plus sign. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, actually, really, there's like at least some common parameter in front. That parameter that counts um, the number of, of times your mouse passes through the data. So once you fix that, that one, 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 uh, the, the associativity of the algebra, we don't believe that all the other terms have to be the same, have to have the same, have to have the same time. Your question still stands okay, so which one was the original one? And that's the, the subtle question of preservation, exactly how you set it up. There really isn't a parameter because. 
there's some instant counting parameter there that you can, in fact, once it's not zero, you can scale it out. You can set it to any number you want. Right? And so the, the problem with it is it's not there. There's only the algorithm of the value of the leaf, where all the right hand side is zero, and everything simple. The, you know, you can put your crossing wherever you want. And once you fill in the diagonal, there's a unique definition. So they're all like minus signs or plus signs or threes or seven. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you know the limitation of the board actually? Uh -huh. like this protein, this pair of proteins, and this pair of proteins. Yes. I don't know which one is like red, red line or which one. Mm. Uh, so one of them, like if you, uh, uh, one of them preserves the orientation of the, uh, how do you see it? Right, so this one, so when you start with this one and you tilt it, then this guy stays on the same, like, with, like uh, on, exactly, exactly, that's right. <laughs> so when you start with uh, these and you fold it, you see that uh, this pair stays on the same uh, stays on the same brain, like it's the same ordering. Where this one, it like ex exchanges the the position of the like being on the left versus being on the right. Right here, <clears throat> like this one was the first one, and this this is the second one. Like this is on the left, and this is on the right. But now, if you interpret it from this other perspective, this one becomes on the left or on the right, and this one becomes on the left. So that when you would draw us two red lines, okay. yes, and, so and this one, one would be that's right. Okay. And then you have to set up and board this to itself, and then you can. <clears throat> and then you should be you should not be able to find any uh, master of degree zero disk, which means that the result needs to be zero. Okay, so now, as I told you, we can resolve the individual cycles as we, as, as we did before for the, for the single trend. Uh, we get the following two resolutions, and we can take the naive symmetric product uh, leading to this kind of uh, toric grid. Is it okay? You understand what I did, hopefully. Uh, now, some of the some of the maps in the in the previous grid correspond to maps that that cross uh, strands that cross, and some of them don't cross. So how to how to identify which one cross and which one don't? It's very easy. You can see it from the from the corresponding picture as well, because when taking the product uh, with another symbol uh, from this other complex, the corresponding map either crosses or doesn't cross. Uh, uh, the, the, the corresponding symbol either does cross or doesn't cross the corresponding map. And that's how you identify whether uh, the corresponding uh, corresponding map in the in the grid diagram on the previous slide uh, should correspond to the crossing or not crossing uh, strands. And we can also collapse the above grid uh, to get a complex of the following form. And you can assign the epsilon degree to each of the symbol uh, as we did before as well. And you can write down explicitly the differentials in this collapse co complex. Here I write it for D1 and D2. You can analogously write it down for D3 up to D5, D6. You can find the dotted corrections as well in this very same way. 
That's right. Yeah, so that's right. So say that this guy has the master of degree zero, so it means that uh, this guy needs to have master of degree. Okay, so the maps are actually max minus degree minus one, so it means that this one is going to be minus one, this one's going to have master degree minus one, this one's going to have master degree one. Sorry, one. This one's going to be master degree one, and we can so on, like iterate along the the whole grid, assign master degree, and organize things into in terms of the master of degree. Which is the chain complex or No, no, no. It's it just. I mean, it's not really. I think no, that obvious it's from the picture. It's well. In in a sense that if you allow like going against the directions of the arrows, right? Because now if you, it is kind of periodic, right? But if you just like follow in one, you need to follow like in opposite direction than uh, than the arrow. The arrow I mean, well, the, 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 the bottom arrow will come back. The definition comes back to the top guy. <clears throat> That's yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> so these are dots. Uh, but now. So, so maybe you should say that the, the branch of the dot and dot, the one that. that The depression is written down is the one that 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 follows the algebra where the diagonal deleted, where all these depressions on the right hand side are preserved. That's right. And now we, we want to correct for the diagonal uh, not being deleted. Uh, and how we do that, we write down an ansatz by writing all the possible maps um, consistent with the uh, with both of the Maslow and epsilon grading. Uh, and we squared, uh, we solve for delta squared equals zero. So here I just give you one explicit calculation, uh, composing this is, uh, this column with this uh, this arrow, right? It gives you four different uh, <clears throat> four different terms, and you use the strand algebra relations. Like here, I, for example, move this one into the center, and I move this one into the center as well, so that they cancel out. Uh, but it gives you some dot. It, it gives you some contributions of the following form. Uh, they both produce dots, but we also have these dots coming from uh, these compositions. And in order for this composition to, to cancel, <clears throat> to, be, to be zero, uh, you need to uh, set x4 and x8 coefficient to minus one. And you just run the same calculation for all the, uh, for all the, all the differentials and recover the, the deformation of the, of the uh, differential. And here I give you the answer for the D1 and D2, and you can analogously do it for all the, all the other Ds. You can then intersect with caps, right? So now... now... <clears throat> uh, I mean, I don't have an argument why that should be uh, true, but it just turns out in all the examples it is. Uh, we check... Yeah. Well, but, you can solve the problem you can bring the problem with this. Probably. Mm -hmm. And indeed, you can write down the brain. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we can intersect with the cup brain, which is. Uh, Cab brain, which is I24, that again singles out T24s, uh, T uh, they're of this form. Uh, the differential restricts to a differential after the intersection. It has the following form, and it can compute its, its homology. You can again see that the uh, complex is much simpler, looks much simpler than the one of Hovanov, the resulting complex. Um, you can compute the homology. 
if you wish, you can compute the GL2 invariant as it's called Euler characteristic. And we have run this algorithm for uh, all the nodes up to seven crossings, and it just seems to be working perfectly. Can you check some of the eight crossings? Uh, yes, and we checked some of the eight crossings as well. Uh, like 819 most recently. Okay, uh, so I have maybe how long? Like two minutes. No, 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 no. So, I mean, so here we have things at the degree zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Yeah, I'm talking about the overall gradient. It is the same as in Kavana. Oh, I see. No, so I don't. Mm -hmm. But we don't. Yeah. In the beginning, you have like three uh, Yeah, because like yeah. beginning meaning what? Like when you have like the original Havana formula. No, you, so you can ask. Uh, so, uh, so for any grade in the category, like you're free to shift degrees and get it, still get on that. And that shift of the degree is going to affect the overall gradient of the model. Your question can be what do you can fix the overall gradient? So that at the end of the day, uh, when you compute the other characteristics, you get exactly the normalization of the zone for a with a, and you can do that. Then I have a question So in, like, in the origin of the the two coordinates, the two of the dimension is the square, mm -hmm. and like three is different one. Here are different degrees. So the reason I'm recreating it is here's the oh. yeah, yeah, I'm so like yes. No, up to regrading. No, so and I think it's true. <laughs> Uh, and then two pieces actually have different natural gradients. Okay. So one of them you'll land the Kavana's grade, and on the other one there's going to be yeah. gradient. That's right. It, no, it's a boring regrading. What, what do you really need? So so you have you have two degrees. You have the equivariant, then you have the mass of degree. And you just need to regrade into something like 2j and n plus 2j. Yeah, I agree, but it's like that only one is really super. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, okay, let me just very, very briefly sketch how to prove the topological invariance, and then maybe very, very briefly sketch how to generalize things to GLM slash N. I think you have until three times. It's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Well, they're great. Sounds good. Yeah. So. Well, it's okay. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, so there's a bunch of moves that one needs to check in order to prove the uh, uh, the, uh, the invariance, topological invariance of the uh, of the invariance. Um, there are these moves that are uh, obvious by construction. There are non-trivial ones of the uh, of the following form. Um, you can see like what they translate to in, when you're talking about the uh, <clears throat> you know, about the, the cycles, the so figure eight. And they basically translate into equivalences of the following uh, following pictures. But both of these pictures uh, can be actually are a consequence of uh, the following transition. Um, You're missing there a grain on the in the middle. Now. There should be a grain that um, that, that stretches between the the two functions, right? I'm stretching. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yes, yeah. so you're saying that I should like another brain. That's, that's right, that's right. You're right. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, okay, so to prove the equivalence, one can resolve one brain and one can resolve the, the one on the right. 
and one can identify two maps of one F2 uh, so that their composition are homotopic to the identity and one can show by an explicit calculation that this is, it, that this is true. Uh, okay, so that was like very fast comment regarding the topological invariance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a rather straightforward calculation I can show you, and uh, I don't have time because I want to also tell you a little bit about GLMs, GL, uh, like what needs to be changed for GLK slash L. Uh, so firstly, the target space uh, changes. We get multiple components of the, of the following form. Uh, basically, we take, uh, we get one n symmetric power for each simple root of the algebra. And uh, right. And some of the factors that I, I call fermionic, uh, and those are those that correspond to the fermionic roots of the uh, of the GLK slash L. What's the simplistic example? Like, uh, GL1. Uh, sure. GL11 is already non trivial. It has single fermionic root. And actually, uh, there <clears throat> it's simply an symmetric power uh, of. So the, the, the um, has to do with the number of punctures, it doesn't have anything to do with the mm -hmm. uh, no. KML. So K and L appears up here, and the N, which is the number of punctures, appears here. And you don't really need to have uh, equal N for each root, right? But the size of the game. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The size. Okay, to find the potential, one can realize that there actually exists two parametric generalization of the Veras row algebra uh, that Further generalizes the well-known WK algebra and analogous to the Verazoro. Uh, you can write down conform blocks in terms of uh, some free federalization and integral formula, as I uh, wrote down earlier for the Verazoro algebra. You can identify the integrand again with this, this quantity of our model and really read off both what is the potential and what is the uh, what is the form omega. Um, okay, uh, right, compared to GL2 case, um, there's this issue that one can act that uh, fundamental and fundamental representations are actually distinguishable, uh, so which means that the punctures are actually going to be labeled by whether the corresponding uh, representation that you're inserting is the fundamental one or anti-fundamental one. Uh, we need to, we were going to have an insertion of the fundamental and of anti-fundamental uh, omega receives some kind of extra corrections. It's not as simple as it was uh, as it was before, uh, which results actually it has quite uh, important consequences because it just turns out that, for example, uh, the things that used to be muscle degree zero or one disks are not uh, anymore or are anyway. So it has some consequences. There's also this non-trivial, no, I mean, trivial non-trivial, I don't know, a duality that Mina mentioned earlier that exchanges K and L and exchanges epsilon to minus epsilon, minus one, uh, minus epsilon. Uh, okay, what are the brains? So, sorry, so therefore, K is zero, 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 zero. Yes, you are going to have two different uh, descriptions, even for, uh, for GL, like two zero, two zero and zero two, uh, and they're related by this kind of Shift. And I think they're, they're just going to be some kind of regrading. Uh, and this is exactly this kind of regrading, I think. Uh, so, because you can kind of see that um, the thing that contributed into the muscle, into the equivalent degree, and now we are going to get this minus one factor that effectively is going to modify the, the muscle of degree uh, by the shift of, uh, in terms of the equivalent degree. I wouldn't call it causal joy. I would. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. As duality or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of like, yeah, trivial ish. <laughs> okay. Um, now we need to exchange the single figure eight by a bundle of figure eights for each bosonic root and ovals for each fermionic root. So for example, for the GL2 slash one, we are going to get a brain uh, that looks like this. 
we're going to write down the strand, strand algebra generators. Now, all the strands are going to be colored by, uh, by uh, simple roots. And um, also, the fermionic, root, uh, fermionic uh, strands are not going to support any dots. There's a bunch of things that need to be slightly modified a little bit. Uh, there's one important difference is that now we get actually non-trivial differential acting on the algebra. And the strand algebra is not only an algebra, associative algebra, but it's actually uh, a differential graded algebra, which leads to yet another modification that we are not solving for that that task squared equals zero, but we are we need to solve when looking for the deformation. Uh, we are uh, solving the Morel-Cartan equation. Okay, so that's the end of my talk, and I just wanted to tell you that we developed some new algorithms to compute Hovano uh, homology and Geo one slash one. Uh, homology, and we have some proposal for more general uh, Lie algebras. And uh, the main message is that it's a lot of fun, so you all should be interested. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, okay. Uh, if we have a so if you believe that uh, Western group that this can produce Solana, uh, we can prove there is none of these. And it's actually also working. Like, you can see that we really reduce full color on the model. We don't want to force the answer. Not just for one plan. Yeah, I mean, the A one of gradient perfection is easy to describe. I mean, you want to you, maybe you want to say, okay, that is gradient conference of X such paper. Let me write it on the A one. Well, in principle, you know, develop theory that to write to write those down. What I don't know is there is a and actually it is useful for calculate just if if I gave you you know that, that there's any more efficient way of doing calculating than this. But in principle, yes, you can certainly describe that in some sort of. Yeah, I think what I'm saying is that you have to you get a curve to do gray perfection, not to do right there. Like, if the data is configured, it's like that. Do the gray perfection with your standard gather. You can know what the gray generator actually does. Well, this is how we construct actually the, how uh, how the, these, these complicated figure eight features are constructed. Right? There's, a, there's a computer program that uses the gray perfection to tell you the simple symbols and apply it. Right, and then you know how the gray would act. On the generator to run like a PR. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. No, the theory is completely false. So you, you, you literally every translation false. So start so you still need to solve some like a question to make the to make the generation. That's right. To make the proposal to not by doing some composition of Yeah, that's right. You have to you have to find this correction in the differential so it flows into the whole you have to Find the deformation of the differential uh, to 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 the, to the full algebra where the background is fully described. So why is it possible to just eyeball it from this uh, given figure areas and then have just to eyeball it what the people are? We didn't want to do that uh, because that's kind of um, it becomes art like gathering the differential. We did not want to go. The whole point was. To actually make 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 a, a theory that's completely algorithm. Yeah. Sure, every you know, individual this is going to try to come, but the fact that mm -hmm. the, the problem yeah. gets complicated, then it's uh, you know we, we we think with I don't know. I mean, if you look at the Hegar for literature, right? It's just insane that they're counting. No, I think they they they've actually counted only one or two non three of this. Yeah. yeah. What you can do is you can try to develop a theory where we'll find some huge presentation and whatnot, so that in that presentation the didn't say easy to come. But we again also did not want to go there. We want to get have an algorithm solution to the problem. In the um, in the geomantics, <laughs> the statements you look at are related to uh, Full of branches of the Um, 
yeah, I'm just going to ask what um, what the secret to general day is. Uh, yeah, so these are these should be Chrome branches of some n equals two theories, three dimensional n equals two. There is no list of n equals two, which if you ask, if you know which questions to ask that are related to that are sort of motivated by a presentation theory, um, this is as beautiful and there's no different as before. It's amazing. But what like um, like for you on one?